Whether you are a man or you care for one, you've likely heard, and perhaps even worried, about the issues that can arise with aging and prostate health. Enlarged prostate, urinary symptoms, and even prostate cancer are frequent topics of concern. But here's the vital question. Is there a way to prevent the prostate from becoming enlarged in the first place? Can we reduce the risk of these common and often distressing conditions before they start? I'm Dr. Samar Turajlic, a board-certified urologist with expertise in men's health, and today I'd like to share with you an evidence-based discussion about how to support lifelong prostate health and potentially prevent or delay prostate enlargement. So make sure to watch the whole video because this might be the best video you see this year. Let's begin by understanding the essential anatomy. The prostate is a small, walnut-sized gland located just beneath the bladder, surrounding the urethra, the tube through which urine exits the body. It plays a unique role in both urinary and reproductive function. Over time, especially as men age, this gland can enlarge, a condition we call benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. From a cellular perspective, BPH is not a sudden change, but a gradual transformation. It begins with an overgrowth or hyperplasia of the cells, particularly epithelial and stromal cells, within the prostate. This can escalate and in some individuals even lead to cellular changes that raise the risk of prostate cancer. Now, one of the key drivers of early prostate growth, especially during puberty and young adulthood, are androgens, the family of male hormones that includes testosterone. Within the prostate, testosterone is converted by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase into a more potent derivative called dihydrotestosterone, DHT. DHT binds much more strongly to androgen receptors in the prostate than testosterone itself. The result? Increased gene activation that stimulates prostate tissue growth. Ironically, while circulating testosterone levels decline with age, prostate growth continues. This leads us to a crucial point. Androgens are necessary, but not sufficient, to explain age-related prostate enlargement. Multiple other biological processes are at play. So what does drive this growth as men age? One important factor is an imbalance between cell proliferation and natural cell turnover. In a healthy system, cells grow, fulfill their function, then die in a process called apoptosis. In the aging prostate, this cycle becomes unbalanced, resulting in more growth than cell death. Certain growth factors like epidermal growth factor EGF, insulin-like growth factor IGF-1, keratinocyte growth factor KGF, and transforming growth factor beta, TGF-beta, are implicated in this excessive cellular proliferation. The first major root cause for this imbalance is genetic predisposition. For example, men who experience symptomatic prostate enlargement before the age of 60, especially those requiring surgical treatment, are more likely to have inherited genes that predispose them to BPH. Studies suggest a pattern resembling autosomal dominant inheritance, indicating a strong familial link. The second key factor is inflammation, a term we hear frequently, often without clarity. In the prostate, inflammation can arise from multiple triggers, bacterial or viral infections, autoimmune activity, hormonal imbalances not necessarily limited to testosterone, backflow of urine into the prostate ducts, a condition termed prostatic reflux, or disruptions to the local prostate microbiome. While early research into the prostate microbiome is ongoing, preliminary data suggests that imbalances in microbial communities may contribute to chronic inflammation and tissue remodeling. At the molecular level, inflammation involves the release of cytokines, chemical messengers, particularly from T cells. A common cytokine seen in this context is interleukin-6, IL-6, which stimulates growth signals such as fibroblast growth factor 2, FGF2. As these signals build, they create a local environment of hypoxia or oxygen deprivation. Hypoxic tissue releases reactive oxygen species, ROS, which act as internal stressors, further promoting inflammation and cellular proliferation. This is the essence of a vicious cycle. 
Inflammation drives growth, and growth fuels more inflammation. Compounding these issues is an increase in prostate smooth muscle tone, regulated by the sympathetic nervous system. Overactivation can make urinary symptoms worse, and this can be triggered by conditions like hypoglycemia, poor dietary patterns, and obesity. With this background, let's now explore what you can do to intervene. Fortunately, current research gives us several promising strategies for reducing the risk of prostate enlargement, especially when taken seriously over time. First and foremost, reduce your risk of developing metabolic syndrome. This is a cluster of conditions, including diabetes, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, and abdominal obesity that profoundly impact not just cardiovascular health, but also prostate health. Our modern Western diet, rich in red meats, processed fats, sugars, and low in fiber, has fueled a virtual epidemic of metabolic dysfunction around the globe. Multiple peer-reviewed studies have demonstrated that men with type 2 diabetes face a 125% increased risk of developing BPH. Furthermore, they are 95% more likely to experience bothersome urinary symptoms such as weak urine stream, straining, frequent nighttime urination, and urge incontinence. Obesity is another critical factor. Men with a body mass index, BMI, greater than 35 have more than double the risk of prostate enlargement compared to those with a BMI under 25. Similarly, waist circumference is a strong indicator of visceral fat and metabolic health. A measurement over 42 inches, 109 centimeters, increases BPH risk by 138%, and even 40 inches, 102 centimeters, still raises the risk by nearly 138%, 50%. The next intervention, move your body. Physical activity isn't just good for cardiovascular health. It's directly protective against BPH. A large meta-analysis examining over 355,000 men found that even light physical activity reduced BPH risk by 30%. Moderate to vigorous activity improved that to 36%. In practical terms, walking just two hours per week decreased BPH risk by 27%. That's less than 20 minutes per day, an entirely achievable goal for most individuals. In fact, men who burned approximately 860 kilocalories per day through physical activity saw a 50% reduction in BPH risk according to data from the Massachusetts Aging Study. Regular physical activity, at least four to six times weekly, has been confirmed to deliver sustained risk reduction. Next is awareness of certain medications. While not preventive per se, anyone experiencing early symptoms of BPH should be cautious. Common over-the-counter drugs like antihistamines can reduce bladder contractility, making it harder to urinate, Decongestants, particularly those containing pseudoephedrine, can increase smooth muscle tone around the bladder neck and prostate, precisely the opposite of what's needed in BPH management. Tricyclic antidepressants may also exacerbate urinary symptoms due to anticholinergic side effects. If you're on any of these medications and noticing new or worsening urinary changes, consult a healthcare professional promptly. Now let's talk about nutrition. Investigating diet's effects on prostate health is immensely complex because tightly controlling dietary intake over long periods is difficult in clinical research. But among the best data we have comes from the Prostate Cancer Prevention Trial, PCPT. Although originally designed to study the drug dutasteride, researchers collected meticulous food frequency data from over 18,000 men over a span of seven years. So what did they find? Men who derived more than 38% of daily calories from fat had a 31% increased risk of BPH compared to those whose fat intake was below 26%. Interestingly, the type of fat, saturated versus unsaturated, did not significantly alter risk. However, frequency of red meat consumption did. Those who ate red meat daily were at 30% higher risk compared to those who consumed it only once per week. What about vegetables? Men who consumed fewer than one serving daily were at 38% higher risk of BPH than those who ate four or more servings per day. So the message is clear. Diets high in unhealthy fats and red meat with low vegetable content 
are strongly associated with increased BPH risk. Let's now turn to a specific nutrient that has received a great deal of attention, lycopene. Lycopene is a carotenoid abundant in red fruits and vegetables, particularly tomatoes, which provide around 85% of our dietary lycopene. It's known for its potent antioxidant properties, and some studies suggest anti-inflammatory effects that may benefit prostate health. In the PCPT dataset, those with higher dietary lycopene intake had an 18% lower risk of developing BPH. That said, the research is mixed. Some studies show improvement in symptoms related to BPH, while others do not. However, lycopene is still a promising compound, especially when consumed regularly as part of a whole food diet. Interestingly, cooking tomatoes enhances lycopene's bioavailability, a process related to the Maillard reaction and fructose histidine coupling, FRUHIS, which not only improves flavor, but also increases antioxidant potency. How much lycopene do you need? Studies suggest at least 6 to 21 milligrams per day. For reference, one quarter cup of tomato paste contains about 19 milligrams, one slice of watermelon about 13 milligrams, and a cup of cherry tomatoes around 4 milligrams. It's not difficult to incorporate into a balanced diet, though individuals prone to reflux, bladder sensitivity, or certain bowel disorders should consume tomato-based products with caution. So. In summary, while no intervention is guaranteed to prevent BPH, you can significantly reduce your odds and improve your quality of life by, first of all, preventing or managing metabolic syndrome through diet and lifestyle. Second, engaging in regular physical activity, even modest amounts count. Third, avoiding medications that worsen urinary function when symptoms begin. And lastly, embracing an anti-inflammatory, plant-rich dietary pattern, akin to a Mediterranean diet. These lifestyle changes are not only beneficial for the prostate, they reduce your risk of diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and cognitive decline. In short, they are foundational to long-term sustainable health. Your health is your most valuable asset. Invest in it, not someday, but today. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.